what are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Well, well we're, we're thinking. And, oh, yeah. and we, 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 we tend to do that not as often as we like. But in particular, now or you... Maybe far too often. <laughs> you, got, you got me thinking about something. I got you, yeah. I and then you. I was like... Like ten minutes too late <laughs> to start the stream. <laughs> we have to do everything only in a hurry. Five, only five minutes. Uh, only five minutes. Um, uh, well, that you say that, but actually, we still have. To, I still have to set up the actual, uh, you know, civilization thing. Of course. So let me actually make sure that uh, in playing, we actually see uh, the civ thing. Okay. Ah, uh, no, uh, that, that should in theory should in theory be working out. Let's see. Let's see if it works out. Whoops. Boom. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, I guess we're. I guess we're kind of good to go. But who are we? Who are we good to go? Who are we good to go? I am Arisimir Politopoulos, and up there, Angus, Doctor Andomol, both ready for yet one more turn. <laughs> one more turn and one more turn. And, and we were just remarking on the fact that we were in a pensive mood, yes, because we were also remarking on the fact that time flies. And the more, what did he say again, Aris? It feels like we're not progressing as much as we used to. Yes. And and time just goes faster. And that's just that's, that's old age, my friend. You're 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 old now. You're getting to I'm, be old. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm officially like less than a month away from the one. Yes, so. exactly, exactly. And that means because everybody when you're knows 30, you can say, "Oh, you're still okay. You're thirty, but when you get ahead in the thirty. No, you're 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 going to be in your thirties now. Yes, exactly. No, yes. Be... Hey, man, join the club. I can tell you that uh, being in your thirties is great. Uh, I will I will leave that state uh, a, a bit before you, but so far, yes. I'm liking it. That's good. Um, that's good to know. <laughs> reassuring. I'm just saying that there's a, a lot of a lot of good thirties ahead of you. Nice. I, I've I've been hearing that that forties, on the other hand, are an absolute bitch. No, just I don't know. <laughs> I mean, when you're 20, you hear that 30 is a bit so. Yeah, I never really had that. I was always hanging out with like slightly older people than I was, and yeah. so they were. So I was like, yeah, no, these guys still seem to be, and girls still seem to be having fun. Seem to be doing it. Yeah. So, so yeah, for sure. Well, no, not it. No, that stops when you're when you're in your 30s, Aris. That just doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> it doesn't happen. No, no, it does never happens anymore. Mm. All, All right. right. You. Let's get to, well, this is our very special evening in which we just do some of our research, but we just do it in front of a ton of other people. Like, yeah. like the, I think by now we have 30,000 subs and 100,000 followers, right? Or like Yeah, that. what I really like is that one third of our people actually just subs. It's yes. like crazy, absolutely crazy. But, uh, but yeah, so we do, do it kind of in public, this research. But yep. uh, that's that's what we're all about, playing games with an with an with an with an archaeological perspective, and then uh, yeah. I see that you've got a very you've got a very nice gin tonic made for yourself tonight. Ah yes, uh, a my cucumber. Bought me, bought me a new glass. Oh, very nice. Um, to, for my gin tonics, and nice. I'm drinking Hendrix, and of course Hendrix is distilled with cucumber. Yes, you have to drink it with cucumber. Yes, it wouldn't make any sense otherwise. Very nice, man. Very nice. You've, you've, you've got it set. I'm, I'm still, I'm still on my, uh, I'm still on my Tankerai number ten uh, bottle. And uh, no, my, my monkey's forty-seven is, <laughs> is done. It's <laughs> gone the way of the monkeys. I don't know what the way of the monkeys is, but uh, it probably just means it's empty. All yeah. right, let's 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 play some civilization, my let's friend. Do it. Let's Not do just it. any civilization, but. Um, one yes civilization one so i'm kind of blindsided to uh, all the people in our chat right now because they're it's oh, sort of behind me because my laptop is charging but i know that most of the time they're just sitting there gaping at the brilliance that is this yes. stream and uh, <laughs> so anyway um, i mean i had to i've gone through half of them but for last week's stream that we had participants from the uh, faculty of archaeology our my students i already have 52 vignettes with impressions so that's that's you you've done some customer research i've done some customer research. yes for sure yeah. for sure uh, that's that's good and there were some really really good ones i hear there were some really good ones you know, of course we're not at liberty to share because this is all 
secret secret stuff, right? Because it's you, it's the stuff that you, students do. You shouldn't really share that on the on stream. Although we, for one particular one, I have, I I'm allowed to share it. I have asked for permission. Hmm. Very good. Which which one is that? The one that I've sent you. Ah, excellent. So maybe we can talk about it later. Maybe we can talk about that one later. But first, let's let's get into it. Um, so. It's good to see that at least in Lyon they're also having uh, some issues with. Uh... Yeah. So one of the things that I like, by the way, is that the the rebel is also the same little dude as the uh, as the warrior. Yeah. <laughs> and I've always felt that the rebel was some sort of like hippie. Really? Yeah, because it, it just l just look at him. It just it just looks very hippie, like long hair, red bandana, like uh, right. Yeah, I I I get I see what you mean. Also, you're not sharing your screen with me, by the way. Oh, I'm not. I, I thought I I thought I actually was. No, I've been watching look. from the actual stream. So no, let me let me let me let me fix that right now because that's very yeah. annoying for you. Uh, yeah. I've been watching the stream and then I I just realized I'm like wait a minute I'm a bit behind. Why why does it, this turn on screen share doesn't want to work for me? It's like hey oh there we go it's just uh, it was just miraculously behind. Boom. It is there now. It is there now and are you still are you still yes you're still in the OBS yep. and is I, civilization still running? Yes civilization is also still running. Great. Come on you. All right. Yeah. So this dude is just happily exploring. I think I think what we just want to do. Ah, the Babylonians again. I like how it's they spell Lyon with an S. It is Lyons. It, it is, you can spell it that way as well, but like it's not as common. At least uh, the team is called Lyon without the S and stuff like that. So yeah, exactly. Great. Exactly. I wonder I wonder where they got that spelling from because as you say it is not the most uh, common one. No, exactly. All right. The Lyon Lions. I always thought that was a missed opportunity that they didn't go yeah. for that. But yes. <laughs> Maybe that would have been too too, too panorific for a football club. Uh all right. Will we receive him? Yeah, why not? Of course. You're not going to be able to declare war on us anyway. Greetings from he who makes mortals tremble. This is such a funky little tune. Yeah. Uh, I honestly, honestly, I do you recognize this tune? I am thinking about this as we speak, and I honestly cannot. I mean, it does sound. Maybe there it's a quote that I can't remember. Maybe it's indeed from like. Or maybe it's a mistranslation or kind of a adaptation of something that's written on. on a oh no no! I was, I was the tune, not the quote. Oh, I, I, I was the I was thinking about the quote. Like, what is the quote? Like, where's? The, <laughs> I was thinking about the tune. Like, because it's such I, a little funky. Like, da, na, 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 na. like it's of course because like Fr France has their like their the Marseillaise, and then I don't even know what the Chinese anthem is called, and uh, you know they are just the anthems. But then. We don't know the anthem of Babylon. In fact, Babylon didn't have an anthem because, oh, you know, God. that would make no sense at all. That would make absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely no Anthems sense. Anthems just make very little sense, people. Yeah. All right. Just... Um, just civilization makes us laugh every time. Every time he laughs. They're just... They're, the, so the thing is, we we are just very weak militarily right now. Yeah. Like very weak. And yeah. he just keeps on threatening us. But we're not gonna do that, my friend, because you cannot you cannot declare war of us on us because we've no, got the great uh, wall. <laughs> so now we can ignore his threats, right? Yes, but they are gonna stomp all over us as soon as the as soon as gunpowder enters the world. That's it's just done. Yeah, <laughs> all right, we welcome peace with the Babylonians. So for, really for for now, anyway. <laughs> for now, yeah. I mean, actually, their their units aren't that that's super great. He's still running around with horsemen, basically. So, flood, str flood strikes, floods strike Paris. Oh, I forgot. Paris is not having fun. I forgot about that actually. Yeah, I forgot that floods were a thing in your civilization. Can you uh, can you look this up in uh, Rome on six hundred forty k a day? Oh, no, actually. I honestly completely forgot about floods. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, we've been using 
the unofficial but authorized <laughs> guide for Civilization One or Rome on 600. <laughs> the unofficial but days. authorized. I like that. I like that. I mean, it is unofficial, but it says the authorized guide by John yes. Wilson and Alan Embridge. Uh, yes. Try and see if you can find out something about floods because. I am on it. Flood disasters, 265. We're making our way into Scandinavia now. I think we should get down to Africa, actually, at some point. Because there's probably still a good bit of um, uh, villages left there to uh, mm, discover. I don't think they have the correct page here. Oh. Because it says 265, but city walls is not what we're looking for. No, it's not. I, I think they give the <laughs> the wrong page in their <laughs> index. Let me see. Uh, that kinda, that's, that's not great. Uh, hey, man, that happens happens to the best of us. <laughs> it does, it does. Let me see if I can actually find it through some other means. No, it's not about governments. It's not about battlefield. I don't know, man. I don't know either. I honestly, I said, I said already. I was forgetting that. Ooh. We have discovered the secret of iron working. Great, that is actually excellent. Huh? That is excellent. Yeah. That's real excellent. Iron working. All right. Let me uh, let me read this. Um, to it. Uh, there's, by the way, I just remind you, have you have you been following this? Well, you know what? We will talk about Sid Meier's memoirs later, but mm -hmm. uh, but actually that we should talk about that as well because there's actually a, a, uh, like on the recent Twitter account re uh, related to that Sid Meier Meier. This actual picture of his face is on there, and has something to do with and then it's a, a quote from Sid Meier's talking about like if you've got very little like a resources to play around with more or less yep. i'm very much paraphrasing now then you, you have to add in a bit of humor to make things work and it shows that face so i think that's pretty pretty neat so building on the experience of their bronze working because that's where you i mean <laughs> that's where you start right you start, we've, we've yeah. got one shining thing that melts so let's yeah. try another shining thing that melts <laughs> ancient even. <laughs> yes, yeah. even less shiny, but you know, whatever. Ancient smelters learned ironworking, the manufacture and fabrication of a much more useful metal. <laughs> well, don't 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 judge. Don't, don't judge, judge poor judge. don't judge poor bronze. Jesus. But it's true though. Um iron ore was extremely common compared to copper and tin, and iron was harder, less brittle. That could hold a much sharper edge. It was an ideal material for tools and weapons. Some observers consider the development of ironworking to have been a key step in the advance of civilization. Some observers? Some observers, yes. I wonder who these observers are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, does that mean that they were actually observing ironworking and they were like, this is a key step. This is a key step. It 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 would be a bit mad if they had actually done that. It's it's maybe maybe I could, this I could... kind of on the fence uh, approach of uh, yeah. I mean that that seems that seems seems a bit more. Uh, oh, you've been t you've been taking classes with uh, Raymond Kabai. You can hear about that. That on of the course. fence on the fence bullshit. Of course. Sorry, Raymond. It's not bullshit. You are actually on the fence, but the rest of us <laughs> wish we were on the fence. Yes. Uh, um, Fence I is mean, the... Ray Raymond is also not always on the fence. Not always. He sometimes he's he sometimes he's on the fence. Yes. <laughs> All right. Great. Anyway, this is uh, this is for for faculty of archaeology. This is just in crowd <laughs> in crowd humor. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, let me finish this. It made workers much more efficient and was found useful in many new applications. <laughs> it made workers much more efficient. I like yeah, that. Yeah, this is such such a hyper capitalistic take. <laughs> yeah, like, and no, I mean, working is useful because it allowed workers to produce more for less. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is, it is very, it is very functionalistic, and not in the societal functionalism sense, but in the in the actual like yeah. they're ta they're talking about the fact that it is that this thing is because. 
if you think about it, there's not really that much interesting to say about iron working, except for the fact that it's just better than bronze working. Yeah. I mean, this is literally the only thing that says, so... I mean, of, I mean I'm mean, i just, uh, of course, paraphrasing it, because there's, of course, a lot of interesting things to say about iron working, what you could actually do with it. But then, clearly, this is the, 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 the culture... This is the, the sentiment that it's shared with. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. All right. Hmm. So I'm I'm really curious about the observers. <laughs> it would be a little bit like like today, like we now we have observers that call the internet, like uh, or, yeah. or, or social media, a great step in our civilization. Yeah, and uh, or, that seems yeah. that sort of commentary seems so much like today. But uh, it could be it could be the case that you have some sort of ancient source that says this stuff that now happened, this ironworking thing, that's yeah. gonna be big. It's the bee's knees. I don't think <laughs> it's the bee's knees, exactly. All right, you uh, go for Rome on, on, on 640k a day. Right, uh, so... I mean, I think that's what they said with kilobytes were invented. They were like, kilobytes, man, that's that's the step. That's the step. That's the shit. That's the shit. So, I don't know if you remember, but in every, like, section... Well, let's, let's say I don't remember. I just right. don't. In every yeah. section of the book, they have this fake quote, fake historical quote, because they thought it was hilarious to come up with fake historical quotes. So the fake quote for iron working says, even so, give me a bronze warrior any day. Anonymous Greek maiden. <laughs> anyway. That is, that is so bad on so many that levels. Is- but on, ah, fuck. Anyway, <laughs> after we've been through this painful cringe, um, iron smelting. Wait, let me the... actually let me actually give that 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 pun some crickets uh, thirty years after the fact. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for for that pun. That's that's you've really outdone yourself this time. <laughs> so, iron smelting actually preceded the period of history known as the Iron Age. In fact, the technology of smelting iron appeared in different geographical regions at various different times, so that it is really more accurate to speak of the Iron Age in specific location than it is to attempt to locate one particular global era. Good job. Iron was apparently known in the Middle East as early as 3000 BC, but was not actually used to produce large quantities of tools and weapons until around 1200 BC, or after the so-called Bronze Age. In China, however, the technology is not in place until uh, roughly the 6th century BC during the Zhu, or sometimes written as Zhu dynasty. As noted in the discussion on bronze working, iron was not really any stronger than bronze when it was forged, so it was not the superiority of iron weaponry over bronze weaponry that brought about the victories of armies with iron weapons as opposed to bronze weapons. Rather, it was the availability of iron ore in greater quantities than that of copper ore and tin, so that kingdoms could make more weapons and arm more soldiers with iron weapons than they could with bronze. So they have a very interesting uh, and very different take, right? Not not completely different, but not a little bit because yeah. yeah. So that's what I I think is so interesting about this book. This book was was basically written as as a f- as a fan guide. Yeah, a fan guide before fan guides were a, a real thing. Um, but at the same time, it just, it's not afraid to just say, it, it doesn't say like, sometimes it actually says like, Hey, the civilopedia has got it wrong here, yeah. but here they just basically blatantly say like, this is not, this is not the case at all, yeah. which is also, so, so if you know a little bit about these different metals, you know, that in fact, you know, bronze is in fact stronger Yeah. In that, that just straight up iron is, you know, steel. Of course, that's yeah. you don't have to be a uh, Doctor Pasco to to know all these properties. But uh, but but yeah, you know, it's uh, it's interesting that they put it like that. It is uh, interesting, yeah. And I particularly like that they, even though, and I've, this is what I find a bit interesting. Even though they've read all these old school like 1930s historical books, and in those books you often read about the late Bronze Age collapse in relation to the invasion of the Dorians and how like the transition happened due to people from the north invading like the Greek mainland. 
with iron weapons and due to their superior weapons they managed to overcome the the old Greeks so to speak so this was a very widely agreed theory about the late bronze age collapse until well, the last like 40 years ago or so <laughs> yes exactly uh, until well basically uh, as long as they're on bronze age ago but uh, yes. yes but okay. but they don't but they don't even though they've read books that would support these theories they don't use it here and they actually say well in fact iron is most more widely used and it was already in use and it's not like it's superiority as a weapon yeah. so they also take this uh, different uh, view yeah yeah no, for aliens sure. aliens I mean, aliens, oh, aliens, aliens were the, <laughs> they, the problem was that there was min- minuscule amounts of kryptonite in, 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 in iron. And yeah. that's just basically effed them all up. So, you yeah. know, that we, we, that's, that's, that's the first thing you learn in, in your, in your pseudo archaeology 101 class, that as soon as iron comes into the picture, all those bronze age warrior alien, uh, uh men uh, from Greece just sort of. Yeah, I have to retreat into their into their lairs and wouldn't uh, you know wouldn't uh, come out millennia later uh, as uh, millennia, millennia later as uh, around around when when were you born again, Aris? Around the nineteen nineties. No, nineteen eighty nine. Nineteen nineteen. That's around the nineteen nineties, my friend. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm just saying you're an alien uh, because yes. I know. So, <clears throat> uh, our friend uh, Colin McCafferty. Uh, from the Macmillan World History Fact Finder, this guy is 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 a peach in his own right. Mm-hmm. He's just he hates China. He hates China. I think that he would he just China, clap for. Like, I think he would clap for Trump. I think if he if he if if this person was still alive. Him? No, no, he's. I, I read you his eulogy, man. It has, he has oh, a very yeah, interesting yeah. eulogy. That's why I'm, basically it's the only information that is out there on him online. That he was his medical doctor. That. Yeah, yeah. Right. Basically, spend his time writing uh, not so many medical articles, but uh, yeah. <laughs> world history fact finders and world historical atlases. Um. So, and I'm gonna try and read more of this guy because he's such a mm-hmm. such an interesting character by in his own right in terms of from his writing. But he has this to say: in 1400, 1300 BC. Mm-hmm. So that's actually a, a little bit before what we're now because we're now nearing nearing the AD uh, line. Yeah, During this AD. period. The Hittites developed the technique of working iron from a bloom to the point where small quantities are available for exceptional articles, e.g. the dagger found in Tutankhamun's tomb. So that is really the only um, iron working uh, mentioned here. I can double check actually if it has something to do with Mycenae. Um, it, should be, it should have something to do with like the, the collapse of Mycenae. Right? Yeah, the thing is, he doesn't really talk very much about about that at all. He talks mostly oh. about Greeks and Troy Trojans, of course, um, and then Phoenicians and Greeks, and that's but that's already a bit a bit later then. So and then he talks about Israel when when he could be talking about the, the Mycenaeans. I mean, the sack of Troy was one of the last acts of the Mycenaeans. Ge- oh, oh, sorry, there it is. It is actually there. Sorry, man. A generation later, the northern Greeks, the Dorians, of course, yeah. acquired iron weapons and used them to overthrow the Mycenaean hegemony. There you go. There you, <laughs> there, go. there you go. In a book. What do you say? Yeah, in a book from 1984. That's not 40 years ago, Aris. I'm not 40 yet. That's 36 years. So. Well, you don't have to tell me, man. I, I, I know. We were just talking about it at the start of the stream. <laughs> yeah, but we already busted my age. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we got enough of fire. Basically, when I was born, people still believed that, you know, the the Greeks, the Greeks, <laughs> the Mycenaeans were defeated by the power of iron. Yeah, I, read, I still had classes about this in my university, so people oh. believed that in... in <laughs> yeah, I think... This this theory may have passed once or twice, and even in my, um, yeah. my university years as well. And of course, it's actually is um, we're hanging up about with bronze working way too long, but it's actually part of the uh, mythology of uh, Westeros as well, where yeah. Um, yeah. where the Andals who um, came after the first man knew bronze working but didn't know iron working. And therefore, they got kicked in the shins when um, basically the people who came after that, uh, yeah. I forgot I forgot where, <laughs> what they were, but it doesn't really matter, came. 
So uh, yes, it's 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 just a, a mythology that's that deserves its own meme page. Yes. Yeah, does it does it have its own meme page? I I don't think so. So, but now at least we can build legions. Yes. <laughs> Which I always yeah. thought was so interesting. Like before that, no no yeah. legions. No legion. <laughs> legion is defined by by iron. I guess it does. Yeah. All right. Um, well, you know what? Let's go for horseback riding so we can finally actually go for chivalry. <laughs> yeah, because that's what you wanted to do, right? That's that's so. sort of the whole point with the monarchy thing that we went for. Yeah. Oh, who's this? <laughs> well, who's this? That's that's just a bunch of barbarians, my friend. Yeah. Remember last freaking I stream? <laughs> I mean, I... I so we're 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 like sort of problem. good. We're sort of good here, but um, yeah. actually, Nan Nanking is a. Nanking is a nice city. It's a very nice city. Uh, it, at least it's a, a good. It's going to be a good middle middle ray middle game city because in the end it's yeah, going to be. It has, the mountains, right? it has the mountains in the end, but which are just shit in civilization. They're never good, uh, except if there's gold in them. There's gold in them hills. Um, I'm guessing this mountain ridge there is the Himalaya, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's, I mean, it's nicely done, I feel. So uh, it's nicely done, specifically because uh, if you think about, um, we we were recently constructing a Rome Himalayas for um, yeah. for the Minecraft uh, World Archaeology Server. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And the thing is, these things are just so damn big <laughs> and so damn high. Big, <laughs> that, it's so that, big that you you can't really build. That yeah. much. So if you if like the Himalayas where the Himalayas, this this part of it almost would be like mountains, and yeah. then you know this this whole part of the map would not be very be workable. Yes. Yeah. So so it's it's just like these you know oh, here's the Mount Everest like hey <laughs> horses equals the whole point of the monarchy quote worthy indeed yeah that's that's mm -hmm. that is quote worthy <laughs> we should get an, a quote add on for our stream. Uh, there must be such a thing. There are, there are, I know. One I, thing I, that I think is an absolute waste is that they should have put in, I feel, Sid should have put in the Hindu Kush. Because, you know, these mountains over here are generally impressive as well. We're actually much more, or as much of a cultural barrier in many ways, or cultural funnel, as, as the Himalayas. So yeah. there should have been some mountains here, I feel, but, you know... Who who am I? I? Man, I wish I could have made this map. All right, I probably have to do something. Oh, there is a dude that we uh, didn't kill last time. No, it's not the same dude. But I like your I like your. Uh, I, we're I gonna. Think we're... That the same. There we go. On the marketplace. <laughs> I forgot how how absolutely American box office. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> or American main Main Street sort of this looks like. Yeah. Like hey. <laughs> We have these stalls open, and you know, there's the front of the supermarket right there. Although you could argue that it kind of looks like an ancient Greek uh, stoa. <clears throat> um, you have to, you have, you to, have to stretch it. Um, what is a stoa? Uh, so in in classical Greece, they would build in in the agora, so the main squares of cities or the marketplaces. They would build these very long buildings with a lot of pillars in the front. And there they would have their stores or ah yeah okay would want to sell. and they were yeah they were <clears throat> rectangular and very long with pillars in the front so this kind of has this sense a little bit of course it would not look anything like this um, no but no 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 happy happy little windows and you know no no colorful happy windows <laughs> no I colorful mean, tents I mean. Uh, we 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 we're, this is actually I think still genuinely amazing art. So that's a stoa. I actually didn't know that. Thanks. I learned something today. All right. I, I can set a, an image of a stoa. <clears throat> so I kind of feel that we should go here for let's go. Let's see what should we do? What should we do? In baking. Let's uh, a Wikipedia stoa. <laughs> There we go. All right. We, we should. Um, you need. You need me. You need me to. Uh, are you doing that in the? No, no, no. Um, 
Sorry, I'm yeah. sending things in chat. All right, you're sending things in chat. <clears throat> um so i th so picking uh, that's our you yeah, know yeah, or yeah, capital yeah, to... so i kind of want to say that in Peking, we don't have a products yet in Peking, right so there's maybe two there's two options here we're gonna we're gonna well actually three options we're gonna build another settlers here yeah we can plunk down another city somewhere it shouldn't be an issue mm -hmm. um we're gonna like army up here mm -hmm. to really start building an army and then soon we will have to strike something because you don't want to have an army lying around especially not when you're monarchy mm -hmm. um or we're gonna build a coliseum now that will future proof yeah. or an aqueduct actually that will also future proof baking um and then probably we're gonna get uh, access to a wonder that we could very nicely build in baking I want to say, I think it's probably best to... St so we are still good now with the Great Wall. We want to probably future-proof, get an aqueduct, because an aqueduct... Yeah, in I think the aqueduct is going to be the best option. Yeah, because otherwise we uh, Peking won't grow beyond the 10. Yeah. Yeah, and Peking has its difficulties, so let's just go for Peking. Yeah. Let's uh, well, it. let's actually see how we're going to solve this now. How are we going to solve this now? Let's see. So, Canton is really suffering under the under the oppression of having to pop uh, having to carry two uh, two settler units over here. Um, but soon, I think that's also why we don't really need a settler right now. I think in yeah. uh, in no, about we ten turns, we're done with with yeah. irrigation here. But um, we are going to need to defend against those barbarians as well, right? Yes, exactly. And I kind of... The fine civilization of the Chinese. We're really not doing super well in this game. I think yeah. we will still get out on top because... Um, uh, but uh, we definitely want to start cracking a little bit now. So, um, you are going to go... You're going to go to Africa, my friend. But before we do that, we actually have to... Okay, that's good. So that, that settler is actually done with there. That means... Oops, sorry. Um, I'm actually really getting back into the game in terms of the controls. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's nice. Um, yeah, I guess... I guess what you can do is maybe... Oh, it's actually just, just done today. So it got, doesn't... I just done this turn, so it can't move. That's a bit problematic. Oh, this is kind of... Well, yeah, we can outrun them. You get to just move down. Into Africa, if we can sort of... Wait. <laughs> wow. Look where they put... Where wow. they, look where they plunked down Nineveh. Your, your very special wow. city. my very special city, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is <clears throat> so far to the north. Jesus. Yeah, that is. That's so close to France. Yeah, they clearly uh, are they're not. They're gonna duke it out at some point. We need to capitalize on that. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of a stretch because uh, we we well, hopefully they are not gonna duke it out just yet, and um, and they're gonna do that in a little bit because we need to build an army first before we can do, do any duking. And for for now, we're actually afraid of a couple of barbarians. So yeah. All right, so I mean, hmm, this is just this is just indulging indulging myself, but so we we better better hope that <laughs> that they that that this phalanx is gonna carry the day because otherwise we're in a bit of trouble. All right, am I gonna be? So many. I'm gonna. I'm. I, we can't really waste any more turns with no, um, no, 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 with uh, with the settlers. Oh, frig you. Oh, come on. All right. Ooh, stay away. Stay away, you. Stay away. So another marketplace. So this I'm liking. So yeah. I'm going to, I'm guessing that we're going to be relatively flush with, um, <clears throat> with, with cash and then also therefore with science. So that, that's good. Um, all right, this one is also going to build an aqueduct. All right, now you 
Better get out of here. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Can I actually make it make it out? I yes. hope so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay. Well, we remember what happened last time when, when we did this? Yes. <laughs> We're still doing it. Damn it. We're still doing it anyway. So let me actually d double check what the what the um, what the uh, defense rating is on a diplomat, because I always thought it was just nothing. All right. Why while we're at it, let's let's just let's just get into the glory that is the diplomat. Yes. The astute diplomat serves his homeland in a variety of ways. He establishes and maintains contacts with other powers. He reports back to his ruler on developments of interest. And when needed, he engages in less reputable activities. These may include sabotage of enemy production, espionage, including the theft of new technologies, and subversion and bribery of enemy cities and military units. Possessing Possessing no ancient military strength, the diplomat, when properly employed, <laughs> is nevertheless a potent weapon in the arsenal of the intelligent ruler. Yeah, why about... Yeah, let me know. So what? actually, defense strength zero. It's unbelievable that it, that it, that it managed to defeat defeat the, the yeah. phalanx. I know, right? It's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, but I guess that's, that's what it is. So um, one of the things that I thought always was in the game... But it isn't was was the spy, but that's that's actually civilization too. I think probably civilization too. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I think that one of the things that your diplomat can do later in the game is actually actually spy. Well, actually spy basically, but also I think deploy a, a nuclear unit or something. I, I can't. I honestly don't remember. But maybe that's just civilization too. All right, you get back. You get <laughs> back. Good. Um. Of bribery, theft, sabotage, and diplomacy. <laughs> All right. Believe it or not, the best offensive unit in the game has a zero attack factor. It is a diplomat unit. After the development of writing, the pen immediately proves itself mightier than the sword by allowing you to create these mischief-making masters. When backed with enough money, the sinews of war, in quotes, the damage they can cause is almost limitless. Here is a quick overview of what diplomat units can do in more or less their order of usefulness. They can bribe a unit, uh, they can establish an embassy, they can steal technology, they can incite a revolt, they can do industrial sabotage, investigate a city, or meet with a ruler. These are the things that they can do. <laughs> and it also has all the formulas of, ha of making sure like the bribe uh, formula and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, oh, it does have all the formulas. That's nice. Not all of them, but for some of them, it does have the formulas. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's one one is here. This one is an old one. Yes. I don't think you've ever played. You should play the original for sure. It's uh, it is actually uh, it is good to know where your roots lie. Yeah, for real. Uh, I will receive them because you're you're just blocking my access to Africa, my friend. I can't get into Africa because of you. Damn. No, we're not gonna give you the wheel if you still <laughs> haven't figured time. it out. Yeah, for real. It's like the <laughs> fourth time we're asking us. So we're gonna not. I mean, we can't could the man tribute for patience. We're gonna like upset him greatly, and he's gonna tell them tell us like he hell no. But nah, let's just not do it. That's we welcome yeah. peace with you. Bye. Bye. Um, so I. What I was saying in the beginning of the stream about time, actually, now we're on like 40 BC, and compared to how time passes in later civilizations, this feels very quick, right? Or is it just me? No, it's not just you. The thing is that, of course, it, it feels very quick, but there's also so much less stuff in there. I said this last yeah. time. This yeah, is, so this is in, to do. in terms of units, in terms of, I mean, there's no... For example, something that is in, of course, in the last two civilizations is the the civic tree. Yeah, it's not here at all. Mm -hmm. Or well, not actually. That's only in the last civilization, the civic tree. Yeah. Ah, finally. Got there. And now this we got is some money. we got some money, which is good. And and that yeah, it was it was much needed because much we needed. Have 
Well, I mean, we had about thirty percent. That's kind of fine. Still. Yeah, I, I I try to take it at twenty. That's we can we can we can drop we can drop some something and uh, because we need to catch up to those Babylonians. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Three and four were the ones I played the most. Said versus Valets. I've I've. I've played this one the most probably. Yeah. <laughs> I played a good bit of five, and yeah. Um, yeah, six is now getting up there. I think so. The thing is, I also played quite a bit of four, but yeah, it's been it was such a weird time when I was playing four because I was at the end of my masters and I wasn't really playing that many video games, except Ooh. when I was and I probably told you this already at some point when I was in my um, my job as a bridge keeper. Have have I ever? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I don't think you've ever said that. Ah well, this was basically the best the best job ever <clears throat> for a student. Is I was a bridge keeper, so uh, there were bridges around Leiden that had just been constructed, mm -hmm. and uh, they needed somebody to sit in a, like in a little cabin next to them to open the bridge when a ship would want to pass by, yeah. and that's exactly the thing that i did i sat in a little cabin all day with electricity and heating and everything uh, so electricity for my laptop and um for eight hours of a shift and just sat there for to let you know a couple of it's not very busy in the canals in leiden for actual no. like especially during winter no. not for ships that you have to open the bridge for so uh but basically like maybe three times a day four times a day maybe six times it was really busy but um, <clears throat> um, <laughs> that's kind of like they improved this by yeah. by adding some <laughs> by adding some grass some some sort of fung fungus older. <laughs> by making it look older. But still, we're gonna go for it. Yeah, of course. Anyway, I was I was sitting in that little bridge keeping uh, unit and um, mm -hmm. was uh, writing a paper about Beowulf and uh, playing a lot of games, including. A ton of Morrowind and a ton of Civilization Four as well, mm -hmm. but at the same time, because it was always during work, it was I never really sort of remember it in the same way. It was never like me sitting at home playing a game. It was always just during work hours. So very, very weird way of experiencing a game. Because I mean, it's not that I was like secretly doing it because they didn't <laughs> care as, as long as yeah. I opened the bridge um, yeah, on time. On time. Uh, the only thing is, I had to be there very early, like at six in the morning, uh, or until very late in the evening. That wasn't so bad until very late. So, all right, this this is actually not going too bad at all. Now I have this all a bit more. The uh, end of your masters is the best time to play video games. Yeah, actually, the after well, I think I played. <laughs> after I this is also a very reflex. Uh, this is also a very yeah, reflexive yeah. comment for for Omar. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> It's like, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm living the life. Oh, well. Come yeah, on. I think the moment I finished my master's, I probably played so much. Uh, because I had like six months to sort of... Until, yeah, I finished my master's and then I had six months to... Until I would start my PhD. But I had already more or less agreed that I, about my PhD topic and the procedure was underway. So I really didn't have too many things to do. So I must have played uh, a shit ton of games at that point. Yeah. For me, it was even a bit more when I was actually preparing to go for my PhD as well. I just had this entire month of, of actually entire two months of nothing. I already yeah. knew that PhD was lined out for me. It was just, yeah. it also was the moment. This is a great time, I think. It, it time also, you... also not. It was also at a certain point, it was just too much. Uh, yeah, because... Really? Yeah, because I wasn't playing much. I wasn't playing much online, yeah. or not at all, actually. So I was just mostly just sitting but by the, myself at home. And then, of course, I was going out on like the Thursdays and whatever. But yeah, but uh, I, I had developed this habit of waking up late, of course, because <laughs> what is, right. So I would wake up around eleven thirty, twelve. What do you mean? You would? You still do this? <laughs> I, sometimes, only when I'm in Greece. So I would go to the university library with my friend, the president. And be because he was also working on his PhD proposal. So we would go around 12 at the library and just sit at the armchairs at the library and just read for like three hours. Just sit there and read and like have a coffee and discuss about what we're reading. Ah, that's a good life. And then I would go back home, like cook some dinner and just play games. And that was my day, right? Just reading at the library about empires and then playing video games. 
I don't really think I could ask for much more at that point. It's 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 kind of what you're doing right now. Yeah, well, of course. Now I'm getting paid for it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> even better. Um, but I don't not that we're getting paid for this, more. by the way. We're not. This is off hours. What we're doing right now. Yes. Well, or at least don't go sending me the bill for your hours uh, for for the past at Play Lab. Um, Eight hundred thousand. Yeah, it's not going too bad. But we need to. Yeah. Um, uh, so we need to get one of these settlers into city into city mode real quick, because this city can't really do anything much more. And uh, so we uh, let's see, let's see. I mean, we do want to give baking a bit more room to actually expand. So that says probably even line would be. Their most played game. I think my most played game is probably still World of Warcraft. I think I have about 150 days played in World of Warcraft, which is like full days, like 24 hour uh, days. Yeah, yeah, like 150 actual days, uh, which is not as much as some of my friends. Um, and then it would probably be. Probably, I want to say League of Legends. And then, although, like, I cannot count really Magic because it's offline, so I don't know how much I've played. Uh, but surely Magic is somewhere up there. League of Legends. I wouldn't know what is the third after League of Legends. Maybe some Call of Duty? I have, like, several hundred hours in Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2. <laughs> Hey, the people spontaneously still decide to recognize. Exactly, they still they are like, hey, want to build on this monstrosity that is your palace? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so yeah. let's let's do it. So I honestly don't really know what's w why what's different. Why are we building more forward? Can cannot can't we build like more forward? What do you mean f more forward? No. Yeah, o only there. Oh, it's just slightly higher. No, there's yeah. nothing more forward. It's just. At a certain point, I think you can go even a bit further to the left and the right, but not not right now. Okay. <laughs> Such a weird, weird little mechanic. I oh. quit League Hard made me an unpleasant person when I played it. Yeah, that's kind of the thing that League does to you, <laughs> to everyone, I think. Uh, it makes you a little bit of a worse person. But I, I this, is, this is like the the best actual co commercial for for Riot, like. Yeah, if you play League, you're just becoming a worse person. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's it's the. I I I mean, uh, I wonder why there's not more pushback against this because even it's almost something that people yeah, like you is. that really like look League of Legends. I mean, not not that Riot is not doing anything about it. Clearly, they are, but that there's more pushback against this this identity that is built around the game. That is, I like. Yeah, that is. I mean. Yeah, Maybe even people like, that like you that really love League of Legends, they like, oh yeah, you know, you become a worse person. Like, oh man, it, it is a bit. The com I, I, you have to admit, like that the community is a bit toxic. Of course, I I, I don't know. I I don't play it because they're all just a bunch <laughs> of bastards. <laughs> See, no, but of course, recently I realized that actually I can mute everyone, which I knew already, but I had never taken this step to mute the entire chat. And since then, I've been enjoying games. Significantly more, <laughs> like significantly more. I just sit on Discord with with Garrett and other people, and you know. You mean you do, you you do that because then you cannot hear them taunting you in Valorant. Oh, I also have started muting people in Valorant now. Good. <laughs> just straight up mute the voice chat. I don't care. I don't care if I miss your call. I, I just I just don't care. So, what do you think <laughs> about this this very nice? Roman aqueduct? Pixel GIF Roman aqueduct. <clears throat> I think this is quite nice. It's a bit weird that the water just... It's just... Flows from flow, somewhere. Flows from somewhere and then just... <laughs> it's like a waterfall gushing out and there's this tiny little pool. Yeah. <laughs> so, But it's nice. I've always... Yeah. You know what? I actually would like this as a little... Like a little GIF just by itself. There yeah, must it be something nice. like... There must nice. be something like there. Yeah, it's such a nice little... Because the rest of it is sort of snow. Uh, it's not moving. And then this one actually is. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> so, okay. 
I think we're gonna we're we're kind of there at the moment where we have to start gearing up for war. Let's just do it. Yeah, let's let's let us do it. All right, because and because we just need to we need just to start kicking some some particularly Babylonian butt. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think we will have to come to support of France, and I think that would be in our best interest. You are overthinking the diplomatic system in Civilization <laughs> One. Maybe. Have we built any wonders? Yeah, we built the Great Wall of China. Yes, right over here. <clears throat> and we've built the Hanging Gardens. Yes, so that oh, that 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 gray thing you see on the left top, that's the, that's the Great that's Wall. The great Wall. And. Um, and over here we have uh, the hanging gardens. So that's the little <laughs> cigarette yeah. thing with the uh, equally nice uh, water <laughs> water physics. Yeah. <laughs> um all right. So yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let us see. So Canton is going to go for a temple. That's great. And after that Canton is also going to churn out some major, major <laughs> cities. Yep. Uh, some major, major, major units, I mean. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish we were there already that <clears throat> we would go for the horseback riding because we need, we really need chivalry. We need it. We need it to... We need chivalry, yeah. This will happen. Yeah, because it's just it's a happened. bit too far to just... I mean, it will just take ages before all units are there anyway. But then after we want to reinforce them, we need, we need to do that with knights. Yeah. Uh, but ah, uh, so well, we'll we'll get there. So we're sort of having a problem here. Is that Africa is just a no-go zone? It's just yeah, it really is a no. We really need a we just need a harbor. I mean, we don't need a harbor because you don't you don't need to have a harbor in Civ. It's yeah, just true. it's just you build a trireme. I think we need to uh, to up our tax rate. I think going down. To I've 10%. I think I think I've already done it, but I want to <clears> get I want to first get to get to horseback riding. <clears throat> So we got another aqueduct. So we our cities are future proofed. Right, that's good. That's good because we were were a bit like worried last stream about yeah. the future of our cities, but now yeah. things are now that now things are that's that's yeah. so I think I think so I've I've I my regular thing was always with civilizations just churn out units and forget about getting getting if they happen to become veterans that just yeah, that's, that's nice. Fine. So I think I'm gonna do the same here. I'm just gonna churn out some legions. Yeah, let's make sure we are safeguarded. Or actually, I'm going to put some catapults out here because they are, in the end, even better. And they don't really have the same sort of thing. They're just basically a better version of the Legion, just a bit more expensive to build. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't really have to do that much anymore at all. You just have to go there. So so this will be your most sort of painful spot if they actually yeah. come and counterattack. This is where it's going to happen. So we, I may invest in the city wall here, but before we do that, we're just gonna make sure we future-proof our city a bit more. Okay, I have an, a random observation to make. Can you open the city menu again? The the city menu, a random observation for Doctor. Yeah, Rana. just uh, so you see, it has the marketplace, right? Right, we're building a marketplace, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it it has a section where you build and and now it's just marketplace. That's why I refer to it. Why is it not aligned with the box below? <laughs> and why is it pushing the other box higher up so the other box is also not aligned? <laughs> Even though there is clearly space because there is space between the click boxes and, and the actual box. It's, it's a very, very, very good question. It's... Uh... This it's is, driving me nuts. It's it, me it, nuts. Has, it has genuinely never, never occurred to me to think about that. But this is nothing to do with uh, with like upgrading to uh, Windows or whatever. This is just the way the UI looks, and as I think, unless I'm completely misremembering, has always looked. Uh, I, I'm I'm trying to find. Um, there must be in the guide like a, a a screenshot of the entire city menu. There must be. There must be. But like, why? It bothers me. I I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. I, there's there's doesn't it, there's I don't think there's a good reason for it. Let's put it like there, that. There, unless there is a button that pops up later, which ah oh wait, um yeah, you know why? Why? I I I figured out why because 
what they wanted to align is the buttons that says change and buy. They wanted to align it with the rest, right? Now that you're producing the marketplace, it just says marketplace. But if you're producing a unit, it shows the unit, right? And and the unit doesn't fit. Ah, <laughs> hence, hence. And so they prefer to align the buttons rather than aligning the boxes. Well, I think that is probably. I'm I'm not a UX but designer. They, but they could have, of course, like brought or a UI it down, designer. Kept the kept the buttons in the same, and then the unit would be a little bit lower. So it, they could have worked around it if they wanted. To. Yeah, but I mean, okay, so maybe they could have, but I think that having the buttons aligned is more important than, than the boxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I agree. But then above the line that is dark, where the marketplace is, why not put it under the boxes? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Um, you know what? Go and ask. <laughs> By the way, we're always talking about Sid Meier, right? That Sid Meier does this and this and that. Of course, yeah. Sid Meier didn't do all of this by himself. Can you link Hello? that? Can you link? I mean, it could be that Sid Meier just sort of did this, but I don't think so. Can you link that video of Micropose in 1990 or 1989 think... or 1991 in the chat? Although, and... wait, first I want to take a screenshot of this and then I will actually tweet this to Sid Meier and see if we get a response about this. <laughs> Yes. Um, yes. Or to Sid Meier's yeah. memoir because probably that's a better place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would also do that. Right. But then it seems like a very weird thing to not align this. I just if I, if, I, if John Acock was here, he'd probably be like, yeah, that's because you know, nah, probably not. But uh, he, but, uh, but uh... I mean, John Acock would be another guy to ask. Why, this, why do we still not have the freaking horseback riding? How difficult it is. is it to get horseback riding? Figure it out. Just climb on horse. <laughs> exactly. It's a horse. Just climb on it and, and ride it. So this video that I linked in the chat, uh, it's Microprose walkthrough. Um, and it was sort of, a, I guess, a kind of promo video that they did. For new they... people that were going to come work for them. Yeah. Yeah. For people that would that want or that maybe what we're thinking of yeah. working for Micropose, and it's I, I, you, you just have to watch it. I I cannot really this express. is this is something you just have to watch. Uh, yeah, are we the only species that rides other animals? Um, we are the only mm -hmm. species that tames other other animals to ride them. Yes. <clears throat> But we are then just the only other species that tames animals, and then you're sort of done yeah. already. Yeah, that's true. So we're although if you if you want to you know if you want to follow Haraway, then we are being domesticated by dogs as yeah. well as you know you so domesticating dogs. But um, but 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 um, I mean, right? You've got you've got all the, the the remora that rides you know sharks and things like that. Yeah, exactly. You've got you know all these little rhinoceros birds that that ride on rhinoceros yeah. backs. So do they yeah. count? I mean, I don't think they've invented horseback riding or rhinoceros back riding, but they do it. I mean, we also have not really done rhinoceros back riding. Which is a shame, by the way. Which is a bloody shame. There's now no, no, not enough rhinoceros left, but I think we should have... If Man, if you could make a choice, like you're there on the steps, you see a bunch of horses, then you see the, the woolly rhinoceros. Yeah. Which one do you want to ride? Which one do you want to ride? I would know. Yeah. We made a wrong turn there, people. I think that's where it all happened. I guess the difference is that the pair arrives where the rider wants. Yeah, but all these other animals that ride other animals, they also know where they're going. They don't just go. They go they... towards towards food. That's where yeah, they go. Yeah, they go towards food. Maybe they don't really have a goal of going somewhere, but more they enjoy the ride, let's say. Finally, horseback riding. I love to work that to my friends for work and programming. Yeah, this video is like... It's just gold. It's just pure gold. Yeah, more casual approach to riding. Let's see what she has to say about... Wait. Horses are believed to have been first domesticated in the Great Plains of Northern Asia. Mounted horsemen from this region migrated into the more civilized parts of Europe and Asia. Often driving out or enslaving, enslaving the inhabitants. Where the horse could be raised. Horseback riding was extremely useful as a source of power and means of transportation. It proved especially valuable in battle, making the rider much more imposing and mobile. 
Mounted warriors were part of most armies when their, until their role as scouts and cavalry was superseded by vehicles and aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, the, the whole civiliza- civilized part is just, yeah, that's a bit too much the wild people <clears throat> from the steppe that are just, you know, invading the civilized uh, yeah. Roman world or whatever, post-Roman world. But yeah. um, let me actually see. You, you find what the, what the, I, what the guy is saying. Have, All right, go for it. Um, horses are particularly important to civilizations who live in steppes or plains. The long distances between settlements and natural springs make the extra speed of the horses worthwhile. Then, since the plains and steppe tribes are so familiar with horses in their everyday lives, it is a minor adjustment to begin using them in war. Although horsemen were used as scouts for, uh, from earliest times, cavalry operations did not become profitable uh, until the invention of the stirrup. This invention allowed mountain warriors to maintain their balance with their feet and allowed for potentially hands-free combat. In Sid Meier's civilization, there is no special requirement for the invention of the stirrup, and cavalry units may be built immediately upon obtaining the horseback riding skill. In order to move up the well-armed knights, however, you will have to select the chivalry advance after you obtain horseback riding. Chivalry is the end of the technological track for this advance, though. Which is always so very, very and weird. The player tip is you don't need to obtain horseback riding unless you find yourself in the middle of a hot shooting war during the earliest part of the game. Otherwise, you're better off selecting advances that have a future. <laughs> Knights, you don't have a future. Yes. A problem is career. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I honestly don't know where horseback mm. riding sort of... Yeah came in into this i mean i don't think it's i don't think it's really there in terms of uh the the world <clears throat> history fact finder yeah probably um, but uh, because it's just one of those it's one of those things horseback riding but uh well whatever so chivalry that's exactly what we were going because we do find ourselves in a hot shooting war very soon because at least one that we want to start uh so chivalry it is um all right so yes let's see well, you're gonna actually go whoops you're gonna move up this funds are running low is it are they still running low oh i guess they are yes they, at least my people like me that's because we actually have uh, lots of uh, happy faces yes so which which oh actually we can now uh, expand further that away. Yeah, that's what I meant. We also had this last time, right? Or no? Oh, did we? I think. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, we did. Oh, uh, all right. In that case, let's let's do it. So <clears throat> um, this one. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> gotta do it. Yeah, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm doing it. Wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, what? <laughs> what did uh, where did the gate go? There. <laughs> I think we I think we weren't meant to do this, but that's that's I fine. Think we broke the <laughs> we broke the I palace generator. It, yeah. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so I mean, we we often make a little bit of we, we like critique this this game and we make a bit of fun of it, but that's only because that's also what we think is entertaining. But this is this game is if you if you actually watch that video from from that time. Yeah. And then think of the fact that these people in these basically almost like bunker like office office buildings yeah, make this game. I mean it's it's freaking amazing. The amount of crea- creativity yeah. that they that they put into something like this in I wouldn't say very inspiring contexts at all. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean I I wasn't really you know it is really it is really a horrible it really seems like a horrible Ooh. office building that they're in. All right. So one of the things yeah. that I'm sure that you've remarked on already is that they start building all these older cities, right? Yeah, they start building all <laughs> older cities, of course. <laughs> it's very weird. I mean, also, there is no such city as Sumer, but anyway. <laughs> yes, okay, but we, we talked extensively about that in the in yeah, the Sumerian okay. game uh, thing. Warning, Ooh, wait. Running low. Yes, they're actually running really low right now. Ah, a bit of civil disorder. Nice. It was in order. It was. It was about time. 
It was yeah. about time. Well, now we have two rebels in that city. Well, first, before we do anything else, we have hey, to... one million. Yes, that's nice, but we really have to mess around with the tax rate. We have to bump it up to 60. Wow. Yes. <laughs> pay, pay your taxes, you rebellious scum. Um... And well, that, that, throws, that throws a bit of a wrench in the proceedings. Um, I'm, yeah. guess, I'm guessing it's going to be Colosseum. guess so. We kind of have to do it, right? Yeah, you kind of have to because you want to keep them happy. Otherwise, there's simply no production happening. Yeah. And you want your workers to be productive. That's, that's why we do this stuff. Um, <clears throat> all right. Can I already? I think I can probably already irrigate rivers. Can I? And does that actually make sense? I honestly don't remember. Um, oh, of course, I want to make make roads as well. Shang oh, we we're in trouble. Up. We need to. Shanghai can't maintain temple. Oh, that's that's nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not nice at all, actually. Um. Well, that's shit. Now we actually are in real, real, real big trouble there. This this, this city managing is a real roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is like, oh, everything's going fine. Oh, everything is not fine. Yeah. Um, all right. Fine. For some reason, the pyramids still haven't been built, which is yeah, that's a bit weird. I thought I, I thought I thought Babylon was definitely going to build them, but apparently they're just not bothering. Probably suggests that they will actually never be built unless we build them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so Shanghai is in a bit of uh, trouble. Yeah, <laughs> but you, we are building the Colosseum, right? Yes, but the problem is we lost our temple, so we actually oh, have yeah. to get the temple back first. Yeah. And that's not going to really, really happen. So, all right, I guess I guess we're going to we're gonna entertain them a bit. And not even a bit, but like a whole bit. Yeah, as much as possible. And we don't have enough money to start buying stuff as well. So. No, no, no. So we actually are a bit in a bit of a crunch here, but that's the way it is. We also kind of need a new city somewhere eventually, right? Yeah, I'm actually building a settler over here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. So uh, then we can build a city, maybe. I mean, this is not a really good spot, but maybe a city somewhere a bit more over here in the, yep. the, the Siberian, in, in sort of central Siberia. So one of the things that we never really discussed is mm -hmm. that um, when it comes to civilization, they actually have to had, had to go for a, a map projection. And we never really discussed that so much with um with uh with civilization six which also uses a map projection but then we never played on on on, on the, the world. world yeah and of course one of the interesting so map projections this is going to be a bit of a, a diatribe right now but I, yeah. I, I, ne I needed to collect my thoughts about what we're going to be doing with that city so map projections of course are the thing that you need to do if you want to make a 3d object like in this case the earth into mm -hmm. projections is is what you have to if you want to put a 3d object onto a 2D plane. Yep. In this case, the Earth, onto a map. Mm -hmm. And it actually matters a whole lot what projection you use for how that Earth is going to look like. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that is happening is that the most regular projection, the Mercator projection, mm -hmm. has the effect that it stretches out everything that is closer towards the poles of the Earth. Mm -hmm. So the North and the South Pole. And it just compresses everything in the middle of it. And I've never really studied the Civil One map from that perspective. But I think that it is basically a, a modified Mercator projection in which I'm sure that they enlarge Africa a little bit because Africa is way too small you know, on most Mercator projections. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely see that there is a whole lot of of Russia, and Russia is the biggest yeah. country on Earth, but uh, it is not as big as everybody thinks it is, based on the map projection. Mm -hmm. But you can see that there's just this whole whole lot of Siberia basically over here that really doesn't serve 
any major purpose in the game. You can play Russia itself, mm -hmm. and then you can sort of go here, but you'd rather just not go into all these forests because they're not yeah. very good for production, for, for uh, city growth. So this has always been a very relatively empty map area of the map. Yeah. Uh, and that's and it's extra big, I think, because of the projection projection that they're using. All right. Anyway, that's Do you a little want the, the insights from the um... on projection <laughs> on the on the on the map. Yeah. Yeah. On the Mercator projection. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, the global map is fifty squares high and eighty squares wide, and that counts for all maps. Um, <clears throat> note that the map, the, uh, it, whether you play on Earth or not, the map always has a polar region at both the top and the bottom. Um, <clears throat> and it says, uh, hence you can think of the game's map as being a Mercator projection, projection of the game world. In rough Earth equivalents, this would mean that each square would represent approximately 311 miles in width and circa 497 miles in height. Since the so-called squares are, for aesthetic reasons, more like a millimeter by a millimeter and a half, rather than the expected but elongated one by two, as displayed on the average computer screen, the game does not offer you a true scale. Nevertheless, it may be helpful to imagine each square as, co as containing approximately the area of New England and New York State. Um, and then what else does it have about Earth? <clears throat> it has a section more general as an introduction to, to maps. Um, one should also know that pressing the T key will cause all the units on the board to be temporarily toggled off so that the terrain types can be viewed without distraction. Tam, tam, tam. Yeah. After you note the various terrain types, the units can be toggled back on, of course. Does it have anything else about Earth? Oh, we're hemorrhaging money. I think we better start. We better start our war, war real <coughs> quick with, um, yeah. with these Babylonian duties. Yep. Um, all right. We're also hemorrhaging money because we are, of course, building thing over here but okay so we're sort of now that we've sort of explored the entire area it probably means that we won't end up with any more barbarians right at least no Asia. not really no no yeah yes and no i mean they can always still pop up but yes it's yeah uh not like they can basically come in from the sea which is, of course is still uh, mm -hmm. dark yeah but uh, but yeah, it does. It probably does mean that. All this right. Nice. Hey. All right. So uh, that. Yeah, do that. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. <clears throat> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Is the gate from the other side? <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, nice. I think, yeah. we broke it. I think we broke it. Nice, nice. All right, let's see. <coughs> hmm, baking, baking, baking. What shall we improve still? I think what we're going to be improving is we're going to make a little road from you to. Wait, let me double check actually. Roads. Because I think roads actually cost money. And that's not something that I have to. Roads. Um, built by settlers only. Yeah. Um, Increase the trade generated by grasslands, plains, yeah, and okay. deserts. Uh, they yeah, don't. They don't cost money. Maybe they don't cost money. Maybe they don't. Look this up in the in the six forty k because I kind of feel that they. The I honest I know that they cost money in in some civilization version, but they sort of running. <laughs> um, but in that case, we're gonna you know, because we have definitely have some uh, some grasslands over here. Wait, in what? Where? In what? Actually, what? What did they say? Civilopedia. More and then roads. More. So in grasslands, plains. Yes, okay. And deserts. Okay, good, good. Wait, I don't want to know about the corporation. Let me get out of here. All right. 
It doesn't say if they cost anything. Mm, let's let's assume that they don't then, because if they do, then we're going to be up a certain creek without a certain pedal. So Shanghai has has its temple back. That's that's good. That means that we can get but some of yeah, them some of them back to work. Basically, uh, yeah, it's I think it's getting better. Well, so let's go for the Colosseum now. Yes. Um, wait, we need to. Uh, where 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 are my good squares here? I guess yes. There we go. We want production, people. Production. Uh, but we also actually need. Whoops. We need one one entertainer still. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Nanking built settlers. Okay, that's good. Nice. So that's where good. are we gonna bring these Duderinos to? I think over. <coughs> over. <coughs> yeah, that sounds good. This is pro. Uh, hmm. Bit to the north, maybe. Bit to the north. Bit to the north. I'm gonna guess because. <coughs> Sorry. Or 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 over here. So these are really good, like with the little, little cratery kind of thingies. They are really good because they're both uh, grasslands and they have this extra production little unit on yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. That's why I said a bit to the north. Yeah. So I think this maybe over there. Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, this is this is gonna be good because we do want to be want to close to one of these horses. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Is there a religion in this version of the game? Nope. No religion. And no religion <coughs> to <laughs> imagine all the people. A, a corona pandemic has literally ruined this song for me. Really? Wh why? <coughs> because it was this situation with all these celebrities, like doing singing all together, like imagine. Were because... they were they singing Imagine? Yeah, right. I horrible people. Horrible people. So I mean... you, you had all these like hyper rich bastards in their in their villas, then all sing all the people. Yeah, fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, all the people. <laughs> yeah, in your ten million uh, dollars like house, fuck off. It's still nice. They sung. They 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 sang it for free, Aris. <clears throat> oh uh, great! Oh great! I'm sure they sang it for free. You're just be. They, they, they you're... totally did not make any money from. You're like, you're just being you're just being jelly now. Yeah. Oof. Oof. <clears throat> Look at all these. Or the tax or tax rates are so high. We, they're gonna. Be, yeah, too way too high. But that's <clears throat> we will soon. We will soon. Uh, well, it's because we built a lot of buildings. But I have this little money making machine set up here with the barracks. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna get back to on track with our taxes. Uh, yeah, at some point, yes, I'm sure. Mm. Our friends are still running low. Oh, they're still running low. <laughs> wow, still higher tax rates. Still higher. Oh, that's gonna hurt. All right. We we'll receive him. Uh, yes, I will receive you because you are gonna be. Hello. Uh, for now, we're going to be demanding <clears throat> tribute for our patients, my friend. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you for that, that gift. Great. We're going to use nice. that gift. We're going to use that gift. <clears throat> that was some nice diplomacy right there. Yeah, I remembered actually from this. There was this little thing in the back of my brain that says Hammurabi was a pushover. That nice. I was like, yeah. And he... he he actually pr prefers not to engage in war. He prefers to just to basically... <coughs> to just threaten it. To threaten it and then just expand by just... Well, basically by what he's done right here. Yeah. So, um, it's just it's amazing, right? That there's an actual AI in this 30-year-old game that actually is, is able to pronounce a strategy so solidly that you can still remember it 30 years later as well. Like, this is what Babylon does... It builds irrigation and uh, you know, a middle amount of a middling amount of cities, and it just consolidates there. It's not going to grow much more, but it is going to uh, also go for a research victory in the end. So we need to yeah. stop it. Um, all right. So there's a road. I don't think the road actually ended up costing anything. So who, who knows? Actually, let me double check with the advisors. I think uh, I think there should be trade advisor maybe. 
So, <laughs> okay, maintenance costs nothing for um, for um, for roads. That's good because then we're gonna plant down a lot of roads. Actually, what are you doing? You don't. Well, have to... Yeah, I actually sent them there, but I shouldn't have. Um, all right, you are just gonna fortify over there. Mm -hmm. Ah, there they go. Yeah. They yeah, built. They, they, they built the pyramids. They, they pyramids. So in Nineveh, of all places, <laughs> right? Oh. The fourth of Egyptian rulers. On the Giza plateau, I'll take this one. Take it outside <laughs> modern-day Cairo. The pyramids represent the pinnacle of ancient Egyptian cultural achievement. Well, I think I think we can sort of agree that that's the popular conception anyway. Yeah, definitely. These wonders were burial tombs and monuments for the pharaohs and may have required generations and tens of thousands of workers to complete. They were ancient monuments when visited by Herodotus, centuries before the time of Christ. They are the only one of the generally accepted seven wonders of the ancient world that still stand. The construction of the pyramids implied a highly stable government and well-organized society. I, I mean, I can't really disagree with this. <laughs> I mean, there are a little bit of like non-statements at the same time. No, I mean, no, I mean, no, actually not. I think that the idea uh, that you know, if you want to construct pyramids, you have to have a stable government and well-organized society of 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 monument. Okay, of yeah. that. So I mean, it's not. It maybe is a non-statement to us because you know yeah. we we kind of know. So I mean, the the more the more non-statements is more with the the pinnacle of <laughs> of ancient Egyptian cultural achievement. Because it it. it yeah. So here it is really about, I think it would have been helped enormously already if it says, is viewed as the pinnacle of, like, is it, it represents, that means that it's actually to them as well. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. We, we don't know. We don't know what the Egyptians, no. I mean, the Egyptians were very proud of their uh, alien ancestry. That's what they're very Definitely. proud of. Yes. <laughs> so they're on the game books. Must be important. Yeah. <laughs> just to put to, to find a point to it i think that um colin McCavity also thinks that the pyramids are kind of important because he more or less devotes an entire spread to them um so uh you know pyramids are uh are are the bomb <laughs> the pyramids are the bomb so this pyramids are the bomb. so a large change of government without anarchy makes available all forms of government both of these effects last until the development of communism yes so this is actually a really good wonder and I yeah, thought that they were already going to build it. So yeah. let's actually see where is Nineveh. So Nineveh is there. Let's, let's, that we're going to do it like this. We're going to take Akkad, Uruk, Nineveh, if we get us, if we get that far. Okay. We, we forget Babylon for, for a little bit. So I think we may have a little chance at taking uh, Akkad and and and, Nine and Uruk and Nineveh with with this army alone, but um, I think also what we're going to be seeing is like a glorious civilization beat down, and we just keep on smashing these units into yeah. into the walls of uh, of Akkad. And that's that's going to be it basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a pity that these horses are all so far apart, but I guess that's just the way it is. Mm. Um, but yeah, you're gonna go up there still. So, uh, we're we're not allowed to to go in there just yet. Let me let me just wait a little bit still. All right, and a road on the horsey. This was really the civilization one and two, where these games in which you had these super squares that were just good all yeah. game long, like the horses. Especially now with um, with roads, I think they're going to be even better. Um, and I mean, certain river squares were also really, really good. Uh, all right, let's just get you over there. Spontaneously, once again. Spontaneously. <laughs> These spontaneous constructions are like so amazing. Every All right. time. We're, we're going to... The furthest the furthest of the wings. So what, what is it going to be? It's going to be... This? What are they? Yeah, I guess so. 
It has to. I mean, not necessarily. We could also yeah, right? like no, hop. No, no, no. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Just, just go for the for the Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it looks kind of better now. It does it does look kind of better now. Actually, it doesn't look half bad. So that's that's all right. What oh, are the squares with black? Blanking. Oh, blank. shit! I should have I should have changed this. <laughs> We're actually gonna find ourselves a new spot. Yeah. Well, an another city. Um, no, the 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 black uh, things. It's cold, right? The black bottles. On the uh, yes, that's cold. Yeah, exactly. That's really good it's for. So, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, what else are we? What? Where? Where else are we gonna settle? So, uh, there in India, it also has some nice squares that we could use, right? India's too narrow, man. It's too that narrow. That is the problem. It's too narrow. We would have to it, irrigate the entire place. I mean, it, I. <sighs> Which is not necessarily bad, right? I mean, actually, it could work. It could work. Yeah. We have to do it smartly, though, because here, over over here, we're doing everything smartly. Is the is the well? We didn't entirely because so here we made a little mistake, as I said earlier yeah. already. Yeah. So we don't want to do the same thing. So it could work in India, and India is actually a nice a nice spot to have as well because it's kind of you know becomes a defensive line over here. Yeah. Um. All right. So probably somewhere here then. We have to calculate this a bit more precise. Oh, shit. There's a horseman there. That's a problem. Mm. All right. Canton is actually very nice. Uh, so what this is this is a little late game trick, but it also works in a pinch in the earlier game. So now we're just going to sell the barracks and mm. net, net a bit more money. Yeah. And, and with this sort of... Now, basically, Canton is just printing money for us. Yeah. Uh, which is... So we're going to be... Making barracks, barracks and selling it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, how how intentional was this in the game? You think? No, I don't think. I don't think it was actually in very intentional. I think it's just it just uh, it's just a smart it's a smart little little meta strategy that you have to come up with if you uh, if you if you especially in the late game because in the late game you cannot just keep on pumping out units at some point because why would yeah. you? Um, so, all right, you're going to go here, I guess, and then hopefully this dude is not going to bother us too much. <laughs> you go away, basically, because otherwise we cannot yeah. attack until we have a phalanx there. No. Um, so this is nice. This is very nice. And actually, let me, let me build some more roads in here. Let's let's do that just for now with this settler unit. We're gonna build ourselves a nice stack of doom. This is I I love this. <laughs> like everybody together, oh. all on the same square. <laughs> all on the same square, just stuck. Yes. Um, just so I'm just gonna. Shall I already attack? No, probably not, because that that horse dude is still around here somewhere. Where is he though? Right. I he went okay. he went over here over here somewhere, so it's okay. not not a huge issue. So yeah, let's do it. Qingdao, help me out here, Aris. What is actually the name of uh, of the Qingdao. Chinese name? Um. The Chinese name is King Dao, also spelled Ching Dao. Okay. So I don't know why they went with Ching Dao. It's this is very weird. A major sub-provincial city in eastern Shandong province, located on the western shore of Yellow Sea coast. It's a major nodal city in the 21st century maritime Silk Road arm of the Belt and Road Initiative that connects East Asia to Europe. The Belt and Road Initiative. Yeah. If Asia I ever, time, if I ever feared, feared, feared a, an economic idea more than the Marshall Plan, well, actually, the Marshall Plan was was kind of good for the Netherlands, but it's the Belt and Road Initiative, man. 
I have I have a lot of irrational fear about it. <laughs> Probably maybe some some part of it is rational. I don't know. So um, history, human settlement in the area dates back six thousand years. The Dongi says nationality. I guess it means ethnicity. One of the important origins of the Chinese nation lived here and created the Dawenku, Longshan, and Dongyeshi cultures. In the Eastern Zhu Dynasty, the town of Chimo was established, which was then the second largest one in the Shandong region. The area in which King Dao is located today was named Xiao Ao when it was administered by the Qing Dynasty on 14 June 1891. All right. German and Japanese occupations uh, in the 1800s. Um, and it also served as the headquarters of the Western Pacific Fleet of the U.S. Navy in 1945. But then it was transferred to the Philippines somewhere in 1948. All right. That was a long wiki crutch. That was, that was a long wiki crutch. And it's good, good to know, actually. I mean, and it that's, has a brewery, that's also... That's the, also oh, yes, brewery. One of actually, the most famous yes, things, maybe. No, brewery, apparently. yeah, that, that's what I actually know about the beer. I know the beer brand. That's like the only thing I know about the city. So this yeah. is one of the things that just scares my scares scares me about myself. Basically, is that the just the the tiny amount of knowledge that I have about the most populous country on 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 Earth in terms of yeah. its geography, in terms of its actual cultural societal workings, and and. But yeah, it's uh, it's. I mean, you cannot know everything about any <laughs> everything, but you, no, exactly. But That's it is, part of the problem. Yeah, I always get a bit shocked when I'm like, oh, I'm. <laughs> I actually should probably have known known that. Yeah, it's right. also one of these things that because it has such a long history. Oftentimes, a lot of people will tell you, like, you don't know something about China, which is very understandable. And a lot of people will be like, but you're an archaeologist. When are you supposed to know these things? And then hmm. I feel kind of bad because. I actually feel like I should have known something more about China than I than I know, just because of like the rich archaeologist that has. Hey, Pasco is here. Hey. So yeah, that's part of my like. Yeah, I feel I feel bad about the fact that I don't know as much as I would. Yeah, like. but at the same time, we're also doing all sorts of other important stuff, like yeah. making a tabletop RPG. Like yes. running a, a frigging past that play project, doing streams. We yeah. don't have the time to listen to a very excellent. I actually have it loaded on my uh, previous phone. Well, actually, no, two phones ago. A very nice audiobook series about the history of China, like uh, the Oxford history of China, just in the entire audiobook series of like 48 hours or more. I mean, maybe it was like 60 hours of just history of China read to you. And I kind of like audiobooks, but this one wasn't very engaging. <laughs> it was just academies, prose being whispered yeah. to you. The thing is, so Varad says global history is a big subject. That's one of the things that I don't do because I hate it and has hampered a little bit of my knowledge. The, all these like global history books that are usually like more popularized history, but talk about the history of the world. I just... I I don't like them. I hate them with a passion. Not all of them, but a good chunk of them. I just cannot stand them. I cannot stand their dick. And every time I try to read one, I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, I, I read something about something that I know and I see how shallow and like borderline disrespectful these, these approaches sometimes are. And I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm not going to trust like my hours and, and to gain my knowledge through this. So I, I just have a beef with this more big, like, global pop history. What can I say? Well, what you just said. Uh, all right. I think this I think this square where I'm at right now should be the safe square. Because one, two, three. Yes. Because yeah, these, are, these are actually still belonging to non-king. If, yeah. If you go one to the right and one down, would that work? Yeah, no, because then I don't have access then to the, uh, the horse. The horse. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and I want. I need. Yes, we need the horse, and and we will still get uh, like a good, a good like we will get these, these high production squares still. Yeah, I mean we do, we're not really in a rush, so we could just see if there's actually a. I I don't remember because if there's a horse here, I don't think so. This ends in nothing. 
if I remember yeah. correctly. So I'm just going to build it right here. Just do it. Hang Chao. Well, <laughs> go for it, Aris. I don't know. Welcome to Chinese topography lessons. Yeah. Hang Chao. So I think Hangzhou, we're going to be. Yes, okay, Hangzhou. Also romanized as Hang Chao is the capital of the most populous city of, of uh, Zhejiang province. It sits at the head of the Hangzhou Bay, which separates Shanghai and Ningbo. Um, well, no, it's not true at all. It's in India. Uh, I guess it's in yeah, India. It's in I India. can see it right here. <laughs> Apparently, it's a, the celebrated Neolithic culture of Hemudu is known to have inhabited Yuyao, 100 kilometers southeast of Hangzhou, as far back as 7,000 years ago. It was during that, this time that rice was first cultivated in southeast China. Excavations have established that the jade carving Liangzhou culture, named for its type site just northwest of Hangzhou, inhabited the area immediately around the present city around 5,000 years ago. The first of Hangzhou's present neighborhoods to appear in written records was uh, Yuhang, which probably preserves an old Bayou name. So that's the, uh, the early history of it. Nice. Oh, well, as yes. I said, I learned something today. I think, I think, we're actually not doing too bad. I'm going to... That's why playing Paradox games are good for giving an introduction to global history and more introduces you to themes and ideas that you can then look to in more in depth because you play through the history rather than just have, have it told to you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. We literally just, we are running a, a survey on this in case you've missed this. We're running a, a big survey on plunk it down weeks. plunk it down in the chat just yeah, in I'm case they missed it, it. Down. i'm gonna plunk it down all right so, aris it's uh yeah. it's it's about time is it yeah i think so what time is it it's about time to uh start <laughs> st to, start to hammering yeah it's i think so yeah 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 uh, wait let me find the survey first <laughs> Let, let me, because I need to witness this. Of course. All right, all right. The invasion of Akkad. But, uh, of course, the invasion of Akkad. Where is, where is the survey? There it is. Bam. And the survey is now in the chat. For those who haven't done it, you can do it now. All do right. It. Do it. <laughs> do it. Make it happen. You will be the reason that we haven't found Akkad yet. <laughs> Jeez. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I feel that I think I feel pretty good about it actually because you know that means we're gonna win. Okay, do it. Break the treaty. Yes. Break it. Break it. Break, Break it all. Look at uh, this lone horseman right there. Uh, or, or lone horseman right here is uh, guarding or a uh, mining unit over here. And actually, Do the survey good luck in the war. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. We right. got this. We got this. All right. Well, you think we got this, but... <laughs> but we didn't. We didn't. Jesus, a settler, a settler has managed to beat our legion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just, I know it's absolute bullcrap, but it's, it's what it is, man. It's just, it's... How? It's so there's this very actually this very interesting uh, discussion that Sid Meier had I think at the GDC uh, I will try to find it at some point but about chance and that yeah. players want to see chance and they want to sort of see and in this case we're not even looking at percentiles here but of course that's what happens in like Civilization three and four but they actually don't really want that to mean that they will lose they actually yeah. want it to mean that they will just win because the, 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 like the chances are on on their side. So you will yeah. just sometimes just absolutely smash yourself against something that you have no business smashing yourself against, like a catapult. I'm sure that this catapult is also going to die. But yeah. um, and that's just the, that's just especially common in Civilization One is just exactly like this. Because here we go, we're just going to smash our legion. <laughs> you just have to keep on, on 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 ramming basically with units, and now this is also the point where we actually have to start uh, start pr production units, again. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, this feels a lot more like a real time strategy game. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. So in, instead of this, this is actually going to be whoops. So this is also where it would have been nice if we already had um, 
the knights. Uh, the knights, but I guess we still have to make do with the slower units. I mean, the knights will come soon, right? We are, we are researching civil. We are, they will come not so soon, but soon enough, I guess. Sorry, um, uh, there we go. So, fortunately, it also works a little bit like that for the for the AI. For the opponent as well. Yeah. All right. So, I do want to take the settler unit, though. So, okay, that worked yeah, we out. Okay. Well, yay. <laughs> I catapult one against the settler. A bit like those 95% hit chance shots in XCOM. Yes. Yeah. Or like this 97% rolls in Disco Elysium. <laughs> yes. Fuck. Fuck. All right. <laughs> So here we go. I We're missed gonna... a 97% roll and I was so angry. So angry. So hopefully... Yes. All right. That's that's good. So the catapults is the sweet spot here. Okay. Peking actually has a Colosseum, so we don't have to fear Peking going rogue anytime soon. And that means that Baking is also going to help us in our glorious conquest of uh, of the infidel. Well, not infidel, because there's no religion here. Uh, what are they? The, the the two cultured Babylonians. The others. <laughs> the, the others. The the, 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 yeah, the others. The, the others yeah. with beards. The, the others with beards and, and, and stuff that we want. So, so I, rem I remember in my first D&D campaign ever, I had... <laughs> So I played my my first D&D campaign ever with Garrett. I don't know if Garrett is still around, but we played um, our first D&D uh, campaign together with my father as the DM. Okay, interesting. Uh, sure. Because my father plays D&D and, and he taught us how to play d, &D. Because he's cool like that. He's cool like that. <laughs> and um, I, I was playing Baldur's Gate at that point already because I had to learn the basics. So I was playing Baldur's Gate to learn the basics. And I really liked bastard swords. I like I really I just really liked bastard swords. So my father was a bit like chill about the aiming and he was giving us kind of things that we kinda of wanted so we could like keep playing. Yes. Um and he I, at some point through the campaign I had obtained this bastard sword plus one, which was not something too too great, but it was a bastard sword plus one. I was really happy. <laughs> and literally in the first fight, I fumble and I break the sword. <laughs> because you're doing D and D uh, second edition, right? First edition. First edition. Oh, first edition. Yes. Yes. yes uh, exactly. AD &D. So we had this sheet that said uh, "good hits but misses," and it was a huge list with like, if you fumbled, you roll the percentage, and this would and something would happen based on the percentage that you rolled. And I broke my sword, nice. and I was like, I was so mad. Yeah. So, bad. so I think that during the years they they really learned about that sort of stuff with with D and D. Yeah. So at a certain point, you still had things like 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 Sunder in third in, in in third edition, but yep. they with the fourth and especially with the fifth, they sort of got rid of all of that stuff because they they just know people if they have their if they have their best sword plus one darling, they don't want it killed. <laughs> no, they don't want it broken. Exactly. Which, by the way, very I interesting. Very interesting. Something like this. In the dig. What? What do you mean? Like, like a broken trowel? Yeah. Yeah. As Gareth said, if he's still around, good tips by the way, Gareth. Thanks. Yeah. We want to focus on the core mechanics first. We then Sorry. we want to then we want to start annoying the crap out of our players. Yes. If you're wondering what we're talking about, uh, Ares and I, we we don't have enough stuff to do, so we're we're <laughs> we're, 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 we're in in our moments that we don't have stuff to do, um, which is basically uh, somewhere after twelve, uh, after the twelfth hour of uh, of the the Wicca Moon or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> we we are making a, a a tabletop RPG together. Yes, and in fact, some other people are involved as well, or hopefully, Kain doesn't know it, but he's going to do the editing and the layouting, uh, the layouting. And then, uh, and then, and then, Kesha is also involved, right? Yeah, and Kesha is actually on it, right? As we speak, I don't know. Nice. If she can hear me? Oh, she can't hear me. So, I'm just saying that you are involved in the drawing of the characters. She's she's busy with it right now. Nice. So Hamurabi wants to speak to us. Why do you laugh? Dude? No. We are attacking your city. We're not going to give you way. We we're not. We're also not going to be making peace with you. We will mobilize our armies. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what you and what army? So there we go. A cut is in fact ours. 
Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Look at the list of frigging things they've they've already have. Nice. So, so Yeah, you say nice, but that's that means that they're also so Wait, how can they already have all of this stuff? How can they have actually democracy? Yeah, I don't know, man. No, this is not this is this is This is this can't be true. I don't think they have all of this. I think it's this doesn't make sense. This just doesn't make sense that they have it's, all of this. Is this just Maybe we're just given something to do, right? Uh, no, uh, yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's just that you can actually loot technology that they possess. So we are we we better. So they already have chivalry and all that stuff. Oh man, that's how can they have chivalry and then not have a single um, unit? I I don't know. <laughs> so what I do know is that we want we want the university, if I remember correctly. So the first universities were founded in the Middle Ages by ecclesiastical or royal initiative to train young men in law, theology, and medicine. So far, so good. The modern university consists of several faculties or colleges, each with a specific mm -hmm. curriculum. Traditionally, only universities granted graduate degrees, but that distinction is now blurred. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, and this is probably some early 90s like chip yeah, on the shoulder. Right. During the 20th century, many universities, especially in the U.S., received large government grants for scientific and technological research, especially research related to weapons. Hey. Good. Good for you, Sid. <laughs> Good nice. for you. Nice. That's... Some anti-militaristic... Uh... Well, not anti-militaristic. It's just realistic, because who said... yeah. he doesn't say that it's bad. No, no. It's just... This is, this is what it is. This is what I, this is what made Stanford big. This is what made MIT big. Yeah. This is what made all UCL big. This is what made yeah. even Leiden University was born out of war. Ah, <sighs> all right, boom. Yes. That means that we can actually start going for something like so. So, in case you you missed it before, there is already also a religion advance, but it's not a religion as like. An aspect of the game, you just advance to religion, and then you can build cathedrals and shit. Yeah. Just, just pointing it out in case people are confused. So, what does it say here for the university? Universities are, in comparison with many of the public works described in this chapter, chapter four, a fairly modern phenomenon. Although scholars may have congregated around the great libraries of Alexandria. Uh, Pergamum and their imitators, most students in the ancient world found themselves following a master or teacher rather than studying, studying in residence or matriculating into a particular course of study. Indeed, the so-called dialogues of Plato are essentially his lecture notes from his travels with Socrates. Such is the model of higher education prior to the formalizing of universities during the medieval period. In France, scholars from four different nationalities, Lombards, Toscans, Romans, and Ultramontane, what? Ultramontanes, <laughs> congregated at Bologna toward the end of the 12th century. The scholars who assembled at these universities held ecclesiastical status because so many of the early scholars and indeed universities themselves grew out of clergy. Nevertheless, the earliest universities were usually organizations of individuals rather than the institutions chartered, appropriated, bureaucratic, and accredited um, with which most readers associate the colleges and universities of today. Universities in St. Meyer are of the institutional type, hence they are expensive to maintain three monetary units per term. The good news, <laughs> however, is that universities not only add 50% to a city's production of light bulbs, knowledge units, but the university bonus and library bonus are cumulative. Hence, a city with both a university and a library will double its light bulb capacity. University yep. has 106 production units. Yeah, that. It's, oh, there's, yeah. there's nothing, there's nothing. Actually, let me double check because I haven't even made it that far. We have La Belle Epoque, we have the Age of Imperialism, mm -hmm. the French Revolution, the rise of Prussia. The man who had everything. Age of discovery. The enlightenment. I'm sure that there's universities in here somewhere, but I just need to go through this book 
at a moment that it's a bit quieter and then uh, yeah yeah because it's it's kind of hard to just find stuff there um that's why indexes are oof. <laughs> you know what happened there <laughs> no i didn't see what happened <laughs> No, I didn't flick anything. It was the AI. So there was a knight lurking in Uruk who yeah. absolutely like destroyed or catapult. But yeah. it, and then it ne next it attacked or 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 warrior here and it just it bit it bit the dust. So yeah. All right. So non king. All right. All right, indeed. All right. Indeed. So Canton is kind of growing beyond its boundaries, in the at least its irrigated boundaries. So we have to have a little yeah. look at that. We have to irrigate it a bit more, right? Yeah. But at the same time, I kind of wanna. I'm gonna plunk down some more roads here. Oof, Babylon! Oh, it's good that we're it's good that we're I taking them down now. It. Wow. Yes. Oh, uh, our content. Oh, oh my God, they are just. They are, they are just like speeding through technologies and, and wonders. Yes, yes, they're definitely. We just need to take them down because otherwise. Yeah, yeah. We need to keep. We need to keep on. We need, we need to, to keep the, the pressure. Do we need to keep the pressure on? So these these are really sort of useless cities still, but yep. and this one will build its Colosseum. But after that, we're gonna actually buy it. Yes, let's buy it real quick. Hmm, that was a uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. Boom. Up the tax for war. Up the tax rate. I've been because watching need... the uh, the World at War uh, documentary. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know it. It's this documentary from the seventies about World War Two, and it is excellent. Okay. Uh, I think I th it's not a really old old documentary. Yeah, series. it's nineteen seventies. It's nineteen seventy. Or 1971, that it was released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By BBC, and it's it, it's good mainly because it has so many people who lived the war. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're actually um... and they have like even like Luft even from the uh, Nazi side, they have this Luftwaffe generals and stuff like that. Oh, nice. Now, I've, I've I've heard of it. I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. That seems it, like it's something that I... it's 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 such a mind-boggling documentary. And of course, taxation is discussed very much in relation to war and uh, nice the well. beginning of war and uh, how taxation was uh, increased. Because of course, Valad, thank you for doing the survey. Hey, yeah, it was a bit tough. Hope you liked it, though. Hope you liked the kind of questions that we used. Did we got we comments? got a lot of good feedback on the on the survey. Yes, so far at least. Some people did find it a bit long. Oof, we are really lagging behind when it comes and to science. And mediocre civilization. Yes. Bam. Get Bam. This is This is a really painful comment. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. Uh, we, made, we made a couple of mistakes in the early game that just end up snowballing now. But, I mean, I think we can still pull up yeah, the win we, here. We also don't know what the Aztecs are doing. And... No, the Aztecs are actually a real secret enemy because they're just basically hanging around in... <laughs> In the in the other yeah. side of the, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We we'll cross that bridge quite literally when we get there. Um, for now, for now, wait. Let's actually see have what to take Babylon down. Yes, we have to unfortunately take Babylon down. All right. All right. All right, so this is a road over I'll here. Just keep on know about history anyway. Yep. Oof. Knights, knights on the horizon. Oh, that's not great. No, that's not very great at all. But fans are running low. Are still running low. God damn. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that knight. Just, just hitting. Just <laughs> that... I mean, this, this, this. This dude. dude there, he's been. He's like... been. He's our first unit. He's been with yeah. us since the beginning. Yeah. 
Ah, I remember. Like, like who, who who did we have for the Persia stream? Do we have the scout that the scout, the scout with the with, that with made the... it to the end, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He in the end he got he got to be this like special unit. This um, yeah, spec ops. And spec ops. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, and he was actually the name of the person that died tragic, tra tra uh, tra tragically. Yeah, yeah. Our um, brother or something. Yes, yes, exactly. Our brother. Yeah. Warning, fans running low. Yes, they're still they're still running low. It's already 1000 AD. Yeah, and we're still stuck with knights. Not even. Not even, no. Aye. Canton is uh, not being feeling very happy. They're not happy. They are not happy. All right, yeah, Canton, you build yourself a... Wait, you already had a temple. All right, build, a, build yourself a col then, yeah. Colosseum in that case. You gotta do what you gotta do. You do have to do what you gotta do. All right. Okay, that's actually oh, that's very good. Yeah, we got one. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. Let's see. Where are you gonna go? You're gonna go. Probably catapults coming. That's pretty great. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a. If you get if you if you get into the control scheme. And you get into yeah. the archaic sort of you don't really know what's going on. Then yeah. this, it's a pretty satisfying game to play. Still, it's yeah. it's it's slow, but it's methodical. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's see. I actually have to move probably a little bit over here. No, they actually have two now. Hmm. Well, you know what? In that case, that's not really what I wanted. <laughs> so you go and go over here to Arkan. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Oof! They, they, they are, they are just. They're just. just they're just. They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Funds are still We're running so low. Units that. Uh, all the resort in Canton, that's great. Go cavalry. Yeah, they are really just speed running it. I don't I don't I honestly don't don't entirely know what happened there, but yeah. Uh you know what? We let's have to let's down, first go with the Legion because there's a bit more chance for go on. Oh well, I guess. Whatever, just yeah. Whatever. Uh, whatever, just do it. Yeah, that's of course not gonna happen. Okay, we got one. We got we got one, yes, for sure. The city will fall eventually. Yeah, yeah, we just need to keep spamming them. That, that's basically what we're doing right now. Yeah. All right, so let's start with uh, irrigation. Oh, somehow there was... Okay, I guess the only thing in there was actually the uh, <laughs> the settler. So that's that's yeah, kind of right. good. One gold piece is planted. Great. We I mean, get the city with six. Poof. Yeah, this is, this is good. So... Um, <laughs> uh, let's let's go for democracy because democracy is at least going to be better for. I mean, we have to be really careful because yeah. bec because we have to keep attacking them, right? You We're know what? Actually, let's. Can you look up what democracy has for uh, military? Uh, uh, because I think that it actually makes maybe maybe the republic is better for us now. Mm, I think, think that actually it makes us as every unit outside of the city makes makes um, makes the population not happy. And that's certainly something we don't want right now. Let's see if it has... Um, it gives plus one trade bonus in all tiles that already produce trade. Every unit outside its home city causes two unhappiness. Exceptions, yeah. settlers, diplomat caravans, and transports. Unit... Units cost one yeah. set of maintenance. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go for something else. We're gonna. Oh, give, uh, also with democracy, you can't declare war, and you must accept all peace treaties. Which is, I mean, we all know that that's what dem democracies do, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's right. just, you know what? We're instead we're just gonna go for the republic. Should I should I make sure that we know what the republic does? Yeah, yeah. Just double check, but I don't think it has any uh, adverse effects on military. Um. It doesn't. No, I don't think it does. You can also get conscription after the Republic, so that's pretty yeah. great. That's pretty great. All right, the Republic. Right. I'm just gonna go for it. Boom. Just do it. 
The concept of the Republic first appeared in ancient Rome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess if it's if we if we're very if we're very very literal literal yeah. here, where the local provinces sent representatives to the Senate to govern the nation, the head of state in the Republic was an elected representative, not a monarch. The concept was revived in the Constitution of the United States. Wait, wait what? And many nations of significant size and diverse makeups have adopted something similar. The Republic allows allowed unprecedented freedom, at least to a significant portion of the citizens, and this in turn often fostered strong economic growth. Like I says, at least a significant portion of the citizens, because you know <laughs> we're not talking about slaves here. Yes, that, and also was revived in the Constitution of the United States, the Republic der Nederlanden. Yeah, that's frigging says said. anything to you. <laughs> angry Dutch Republic noises. <laughs> yes, exactly. Angry Dutch Republic noises. <laughs> we're we're the first people that sort of put e- the economy be- before before the rest of the, the people. Angry Florentine and Venetian noises. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Nice. But nice. you know. We we've often talked about the American roots in in yeah. in the game of that is still there in Civilization and less so in Civilization Six, but was very strong still in Civilization Five. This yeah. is really it on full display. This is an American game made for a most overwhelmingly American market that would know the Republic from their history lessons in school, or in fact their polit- uh, uh, politics lessons in school, and would have heard this message like literally. The United States was the was the first really meaningful republic. Yep. Uh, so that's that's where that comes from. Pasco is out. I think we should also be. Wrapping yes, up. we're also going to wrapping up. Uh, yes, so. We are at two hours. So now that All we right. got the republic, we conquered a bunch of cities, and yes. we'll continue with the war. I guess in the next stream. Hey, thanks for the survey, Tuxit. Hey, very, very. Thank you, very. Your, thank you for your kind comments. Very, 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 very. Really nice. Yes. All right. Let's um, let's, uh, let's wrap up wrap it today. up. Hey, we did get Mag- Magellan's uh, expedition, by the way. Nice. That's nice for that's, sure. That's nice. So, and we're actually um, gonna go for for Nineveh after this. Not, and not straight down to Babylon. No. So there's no real point in um, um, tackling their capital. Uh, in terms of, it's not going to just destroy their. So they're just going to build the capital somewhere else, and I think that the the. I mean, we could, we could. It actually doesn't matter that much. We could also go straight to Babylon because I'm sure that's already much bigger now. And then we should play the Gates of Babylon by Rainbow. <laughs> All right, now that's uh, that's something for uh, for next uh, for next stream for next stream. For next week, because next stream, actually, we're not playing Civilization 1. No, we're going to be playing a civilize, a Civ-like. A civ- or, yeah, we're going to be playing a Civ-like we're gonna game. Be, we're going to be playing a, a game that is a mix between Civilization and City Builders. Yes. So uh, and it be is playing. Before We Leave, a yes. game that has just come out uh, a couple of days by ago. Developers, yeah, by developers. Balancing Bunchy. Monkey. Yeah. Great, great, great name yeah. for your for your game company. Uh, like and Kiwi Studio. And um, uh, it's I've been playing the game a little a little bit already. I have a lot of thoughts on it. A lot of it's an interesting game. It's an right. interesting game. So we we will hear those thoughts on Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday. So Thursday thanks for joining us. Is. And as always, yes. stay happy, stay healthy, and see you soon. <laughs>